lies. Last night? Indeed, I believe so. States since the plague started.
What was that? Huh? Ah! Firing! Set up a cell for Sokolov in the old kennel. Shackles and everything. It'll be a shock, him waking up in the straw and old dog poop. But from what I hear, he's woken up worse places. Guess we all have at that. Well done, Corvo. Well done. I doubt a dozen soldiers could have done it better. Sokolov's knowledge will enable us to strike at the Lord Regent directly, and ultimately help you get your life back. Soon, we won't have to hide in the shadows. The Royal Physician is brilliant, but he was a fool to protect the Lord Regent. Sokolov gave us the elixir, the war machines. He could have made us a great nation. Now he pays the price for siding with the time. You have my thanks, sir. If you wish to get some sleep, now is a good time. I hope they don't have to hurt him. He's done some good in his time. Made that elixir against the plague, he did. 
A clever man, Sokolov. Look what it led him to. Normally, I'm a natural philosopher, but today, consider me a humble craftsman here to serve. I'm working on a new arc pylon. It will perform absolutely stunning acts of destruction, I expect. Attention citizens. This evening, the streets adjacent to Pendleton Manor will be closed for a private ceremony following the tragic loss of two of our city's drivers, the Lords Custis and Morgan Pendleton. All holdings and parliamentary votes now fall to Lord Trevor Pendleton, who asks for respect during this time of mourning. Attention Dunwall citizens. Be aware that looting of evacuated areas is a serious offense and will be summarily punished by officers of the watch. Display your pride in Dunwall respecting the property and rights of others in these trying times and preserving the timeless beauty of our fair city. Corvo, can I tell you something? I have a secret retreat nearby that may come in handy if the city watch ever kicks in the doors. It's an abandoned apartment across the street from the bar. I don't think anyone else here knows about it, but I'm guessing I can trust you. The key is stashed under my bunk upstairs. If there's ever trouble, you can go there for safety. I know I will. Lord Pendleton has departed for the evening to attend to matters at the manor. It concerns the departure of his brothers. I'm sure you understand. I want you to know I understand your actions with regards to Custis and Morgan. They were horrible men. Lord Pendleton shares little with his brothers, other than name. The stories I could tell you about what my lord's older brothers did to some of the staff, especially the maids, it's beyond my station, but I must say they were beasts, dressed as nobles. Lord Pendleton will return on the morrow. Lord Pendleton Memoirs, Chapter 41. In which I bed two of the Boyle women, and only missed the third by virtue of some inclement weather. It was the month of rain, and to counter the gloom, the Boyle ladies hosted three nights of merriment by invitation only. Lydia was most fetching in lavender pants and a tunic of yellow silk. She was pleased with me from the moment I walked in the door, with my manservant bringing not one, but two cases of effervescent wine from the south. In fact, I had come laden with gifts, such that all three Boyle women soon took notice and they set out to make me more than welcome. We uncorked the wine right away, and as night fell, we... Wallace! Confound these interruptions! 
Don't worry. We won't start the interrogation without you. Give me a length of rope and a bucket of seawater. That's all I need to break a man. The royal physician has a subtle mind. He may attempt to trick us. He's only a natural philosopher. How tough could he be? Good work, Corvo. Get some rest and we'll take a crack at him tomorrow. Where do I find a good meal around here? If you think prison food's bad, you should see what the Abbey serves its captives. I think the overseers make it themselves. I wonder what Piero thinks of our guest. I still wake up thinking I'm in the stocks. The nursemaid Callista is quite fetching, huh? Or maybe I've been in prison too long. I'll sleep like the dead tonight. We're getting closer to reaching our goals, but our position is becoming more dangerous. You don't house and feed a half dozen people without leaving telltale traces. Riverboats pass day and night, and the looters are going to start gathering once they're sure the plague has burned the place out. I conclude, if our enemies are not dead by the month of wind, we will be. There's a sadness in Emily, but she's strong. Weathering the death of her mother just a half a year ago better than most grown men I've known. Once we take Dunwall Tower, I'll see that her life is better. I've always thought that I'd command the Navy in her name, but sometimes I wonder if I shouldn't just take the title the Royal Physician is badly shaken up. Do it properly. I'll have the servants see to his new quarters. Take a night's rest, and then you can help interrogate him. La di da, di da, di da, la di da, di da. La di da di da di da 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 la di da da da. Oh, how do you do, sir? Oh, I apologize for my state. I could use a long soak in the bath. So relaxing. What a treat that would be, hmm? Population of plague rats. You are warned to stay out of uninhabited buildings. You're a bold one, Master Corvo, snatching the royal physician like that. That poor man. I hope you won't be too rough with him. Attention Dunwall citizens, be aware that looting of evacuated areas is a serious affair and will be summarily punished by officers of the watch. Display your pride in Dunwall by respecting...
Attention, Dunwall citizens. You are required to boil any water from public fountains or the river. Anyone who has consumed untreated water must be reported to the watch. Please be as quiet as you can. It took forever for Emily to fall asleep. Poor dear. It's okay, Emily, I'm here. She seems happier when you're here. Though I know you have important things to do. Out there, in the city. a need to work on table etiquette. She knows it all, even if she chooses not to employ it. She'd rather hold her spoon by the wrong end and pretend it's a sword. Then suddenly she changes and she's all manners, asking for a tea party. I try to oblige her, but I have little to work with. No proper plate instead of a cloth napkin. I've only the bar rack. Ale mugs instead of teacups. I've asked for things befitting her, but they have their minds on other things. For now, Emily and I decided to make a pretend dinner using paper and little things she's found here and there. On the floor, I suppose. Not right for a princess, but it'll have to do. She still has bad dreams, though it's understandable given all she's been through. Sometimes she calls out your name. Sometimes she cries for her mother. Little Emily, someday soon an empress, but only an exhausted child at the moment. Poor girl, she's been through so much. I hate to say it, but we're counting on you to make things better. I'll stay right here, by her side all night. Please, please Corvo, leave a candle please. for me. I, it gets dark in here and I, I can't see my mother. I just want a candle. Where is Corvo? No! Mother, run! Must no! You? Corvo! <gasps> Emily needs rest. You were making funny faces while you were sleeping. I decided to nap here in your room while Callista was taking her bath. She told me if there's ever trouble, I should always run here. Callista will come get me when she's done with her bath. Thanks, Corvo. It makes me feel better.
She sees more than she is telling, young Lady Emily. Poor Emily. Her childhood is lost. She has become a pawn in the games of men. The young lady Emily was trying to sneak into your quarters while you slept, sir. I don't think she meant any harm. First you joined us, then Overseer Martin, then Lady Emily, then Mr. Sokolov. More dishes and laundry for me. At least make me feel safer. At one time, we used to have colorful bedding. Someone bleached it all trying to kill plague germs. It's gotten so bad that I can barely walk anyway, even during the day. Those dogs from the city watch are terrible, just mean. No one here can sing. I think we could use some song here, some music. Attention Dunwall citizens, the ascent- I know it looks- I was inventing a new kind of lock. The tumblers, shaped like snowflakes. Okay. The truth is, there is no snowflake lock. I was just, you know, looking through the lock. I realize, well, everything you're thinking I already realize. I'm a natural philosopher, but that doesn't mean I'm not a gentleman, or I try to be one. You require my unique services? We can quickly return to my shop. Be aware that looting of evacuated areas is a serious offense and will be summarily punished by officers of the watch. Display your pride in Dunwall by respecting the property and rights of others in these trying times and preserving the timeless beauty of our fair city.
Can't you see I'm about to bathe? Corvo, under other circumstances, I assure you I might welcome your advances. But rats, plague, and tyranny have a way of killing the mood. Well, Mr. Sokolov has certainly recovered. A good night's sleep has left him with an appetite. The High Overseer is supposed to be the most pious man in the Empire. Living completely in alignment with the Seven Strictures and guiding the people in the religious faction towards spiritual health. Campbell was a farce. If not for all the blackmail material he accumulated, he'd have never been more than a lower-level initiate among overseers. The Admiral Lord Pendleton and I have already begun using some of what we've learned from Campbell's Black Book, Corvo. You've given us powerful leverage to get the overseers on our side. I can't thank you enough. I'll speak to you later. I've got to go through Campbell's journal again. It's incredible. A decade of secrets, betrayals, and observations. Now I understand how such a man rose to the top of the Abbey. Do, Do not be deceived, deceived by his talk of strictures. Mahat's crimes weigh heavy on his spirit. He has been a soldier, a highway robber, and a man of faith. He wonders which is more powerful, the knife or the tongue. Good morning, Corvo. I believe Sokolov is awake now. The Admiral is with him now. I'm sure they are ready to start on your arrival. 